来到电影娱乐吧，我是主持人陈巧玲。今天要介绍给大家的一部是有关爱情的电影，叫做《水底情深》。而导演呢是来自杨澜的迷宫大导演，所以风格一样是充满了奇幻及暗黑童话的氛围。故事呢是设定在六零年代的冷战初期，有一名在政府部门工作的哑巴女生和一个神秘的水底生物，两者间呢是跨越种族、超脱语言的爱，最后会有怎么样的发展呢？精彩电视特辑，我们就一起来欣赏吧。If I told you about her, the princess without voice, what would I say? She can hear you. You clean that lab. You get out. This may very well be the most sensitive asset ever to be housed in this facility. You may think that thing looks human, stands on two legs, right? But we're created in the Lord's image. You don't think that's what the Lord looks like, do you? This creature is intelligent, capable of language. Of understanding emotions. When he looks at me, he does not know how I am incomplete. He sees me as I am. J'avoue, j'en ai bavé pas vous, mon amour. The natives in the Amazon worshipped him like a god. Get him out! What are you talking about? No. We need to take it apart, learn how it works. I don't want an intricate, beautiful thing destroyed. We can do nothing. I'm sorry. Don't do this, Elasa. What is she saying? Don't do this. Oh God, it's not even human. 在嗯。He's a good man. He's, he's a little self-involved right now in this time in his life. Um, things are not going well for him. He's, he's alone, uh, and he doesn't want to be. Um, he is a gay man in 1962, which um, I think says 
makes it um, easier to be alone. <laughs> um, uh, and he's looking for love. He's looking for acceptance. He's looking for connection. And his best friend is uh, um, Eliza, Sally Hawkins, who lives ne next door and uh, who's mute. So he does all the talking. Well, you look at this. Look. Some of the best minds in the country peeing all over the floor in this here facility. Mm, mm, mm. There's pee freckles on the ceiling now. How'd they get it up there? Just how big a target do they need, you figure? And get enough practice, that's for sure. My Brewster? No one's ever called him a great mind, but even he manages to hit the can 7% of the time. <laughs> Excuse us, sir. No, no, no. That's all right. Go ahead. You ladies seem to be chatting enjoyably. Girl talk, no doubt. Don't mind me. Uh, it's beyond, um, words, um, which is apt. <laughs> um, love is beyond words. I love that Guillermo tells the story of, of, of people that are seemingly dismissible and easily dismissible and not really understood or um, heard or given a voice. And he literally takes, makes a mute. Well, the idea is, can we take a, a format, like in Pan's Labyrinth, the traditional fairy tale, can we take a format and twist it? You know, can we make changes and make it interesting for now? And the idea for me is to make a very political uh, fairy tale now and to say, okay, the guy that would have been the hero in 1950 is the villain here. And the image of the monster carrying the girl that in the 1950s would have been an image of horror is here an image of redemption and love. And it's a beautiful image uh, to go out on, you know? Because we live in a world where we are separated by ideas and we're talking about getting a wall between countries, you know, in, in the 21st century, which is mind-boggling to me, you know, I think it's about uh, coming together, you know. This may very well be the most sensitive asset ever to be housed in this facility. The movie is at the height of the Cold War between Russia and America. Their only concern is the asset. The Soviets want it. Everybody is obsessed with getting to the future. The Cadillacs, the Jello puddings, the modern clothes. And in the meantime, there's this ancient force working amongst all that modernity. The government is trying to figure out whatever this creature's gifts are can be utilized towards the space program. We need to take it apart, learn how it works. The story is about the invisible people, the help. It's a love story between two characters not quite like you've ever seen it before. It's a creature, it's a living, breathing heart. So beautiful, it's all I saw. Get him out. What are you talking about? No. With this story, the humans are the monsters. I don't want an intricate, beautiful thing destroyed. Guillermo calls it a fairy tale for troubled times, and it is very much that. I mean, not just then, but for now. There's something really beautiful about it because what the story is actually saying about who we are as human beings and who we want to be as human beings. The way it embraces love. We need this film in the world today. If I spoke about it, what would I say? I mean, it's magical. Sort of welled up the first... You never think you're going to get that cool, and you always think you they've got the wrong person. And even now, I think, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't mean me. <laughs> they've got... He said Sally Hawkins, but I'm not sure. As soon as I meet him, we go, oh, no. <laughs> this is the wrong girl. So, but, um, and I met him in Toronto and it was first sort of early draft still. He was still 
writing it and he insisted he said, well, yeah, you know writing it and and you're and you never it's so beyond your sort of thing how did that happen mm -hmm. you end up here how did that thank you um mm -hmm. and i remember reading those first and it was on a laptop when i was mm -hmm. in toronto I sort of slid it across the table and just stunning mm -hmm. and so overwhelmed a beautiful, it's, it's beautiful. It's a fair, it's the most beautiful script I've yeah. ever read, I think. Well, it's America in 62, which is right before America, the American dream, you know, it's post-war, post-economic uh, collapse, and America is literally at the peak of prosperity. You know, it's right before the Vietnam conflict fully engages. The we're all, America is already in Vietnam, but it's not the morass that is going to become, and is is the moment when Camelot is alive in the American imagination. A few months after the movie, you know, Kennedy will get shot, and the American dream collapses. So it's that precise moment when he's looking at the future, and they find a creature that is the past, is ancient and divine and beautiful, but the modernity gets in the way of looking at it in its divine essence, and everybody looks at it like a thing, except Sally Hawkins, who looks at that creature with enormous love and empathy.欢迎继续回来而当中灵魂角色 well, he doesn't deny they exist, and he doesn't deny that the world is a complicated kind of, uh, can be a very vicious, uh, unfriendly place. But at the same time, he believes that in, in the middle of all that, is, there's a purity that's there. It just you have to find it. And um, uh, yeah, that's what, if, if he didn't deal with that other stuff, um, it wouldn't mean anything. Uh, so, but it's hard to do, you know, without becoming sappy or maudlin or, or, and it just, it's hard to do. And not, as I said before, Frank Capra could do it and Guillermo del Toro can do it. It is, it's, it's pretty great. Um, I think I don't really take her seriously until about two-thirds away through the film uh, and when I realize what kind of a friend she is and what she's asked me to do to help her. Um, and I think it's really, he goes a long way in, in this movie. I mean, he's, he's kind of at the end. He's an artist. Um, he works for an ad company and they're starting to use photographs and not artwork anymore and he's, he's feeling lost and uh, uh, I, I think the last person he thinks to look to is Eliza and that's where he finds himself. Security. Oh, just one moment, please. Security. Who's security? Welcome to T4, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I am Fleming, head of security. Get 
She's like a child, she has such an innocence. It's so beautiful, it's so pure, you know, and she's all instinct. And she doesn't know that she's a creature, there's something in her that is similar. She just recognises that there's a real connection and doesn't quite understand what that is, but doesn't matter. And just the curiosity, I, I adored that innocence is so delicate and it was quite precise to get and This creature is intelligent, capable of understanding emotions. I asked Dog to join the movie because he is an actor. He's not a performer. If you don't have an actor inside that suit, you don't have a movie. It's my sixth feature film with him. I'm so blessed that he trusts me with these characters that are so beloved to him. You may think that thing looks human. Stands on two legs, right? This creature is a presence. He needed to have a very strong ancient energy, and Dog got it. Guillermo gave me the best notes. He says, he's a combination. You played the Silver Surfer. He's part Silver Surfer, part Matador. Oh my God. Oh my God. I said to Dog, you're gonna stand like a Toreador. Very masculine in the way they find their center. He's graceful, he's strong, he's athletic, and there's a sexiness to it, to a Toreador. need to take it apart, learn how it works. What happened? It's an animal, just keeping it tame. The fish man is more primal, more animalistic. He's never interacted with culture of any sort. If you look at his performance, it's really remarkable. I want to create a moment on film that will last forever, and he's that director that can make immortal things happen on film. Me neither. I wrote it for Sally, Michael Shannon, and Octavia. I wrote the roles specific for them, and they said yes, all of them. So it was very fortunate. You have uh, Michael Shannon is intelligent and empathic, even if he is a monster. You know, he has moments of fragility in the film that are very beautiful. Octavia is Octavia. She's like the most human, intelligent, emotional, uh, alive performer, and Sally, has an essence of great purity and beauty all of her own, you know? It's like uh, she has a, not an innocence, but a purity, and she can look at this creature with great love and belief, and she's almost like a silent comedian, because she has no dialogue in the movie, no lines spoken. Uh, she's, uh, she speaks sign language, and she's incredibly uh, demonstrative and emotional through her eyes. Well, he probably is, like, Genius. Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. He is more in touch with his body than anybody I know. Mm -hmm. um, because he has the most difficult job, is that he has to actually embody it, and he doesn't get to show his facial features to help convey yeah. um, his different uh, emotions. He's amazing he and amazing. a lot of fun, but you spent mo more time. I adore him. He's got the huge heart and it just sings out, shines out through it. It's, got, it's like acting in a straight jacket and yet rubberized suit that's wet a lot, so it's incredibly heavy. Mm -hmm. And he's this contortionist, mm -hmm. beautiful, the way he moves. It's like it's watching this dance, this balletic. Mm -hmm. He's it, stunning. and. Yet yeah, it's so moving, actually, mm -hmm. to work with him. And I, I, adore, I adore him as a human being and as a half-fish mm -hmm. <laughs> man. It, he's, it was easy to fall in love with him. Yeah. Uh, he's a very beautiful soul, and um, it shines through. Mm -hmm. And even he can't, couldn't see for a lot of things underwater mm -hmm. and not knowing where he's coming up and a very precise camera position where he had to be and yet it's just stunning. The guy puts a fish suit on. I mean, how hard is it? You know? I, it but do, the, do the fish without the suit and then I'll, then I'll really be impressed. But no, I mean, Doug was amazing. It, my first scene with him, um, in, in the, he was in the bathtub, and uh, we were waiting to shoot, and he was sitting there, and I thought, I don't know, 
and looks like an actor in a fish suit to me. And uh, then they went action, and he changed. And I just got it. But, oh, it was subtle and small, and but it was really cool. Oh, my feet already killed me. I made Brewster pigs in the blanket tonight before leaving. Boy, he just ate them up. No thank yous, no yum yums, not a pea. Man is as silent as a grave. But if farts are flattery, honey, he be Shakespeare. And then I get home and I make him breakfast. Eggs, bacon, and butter toast. I butter the man's toast a lot. Mm-hmm, both sides, as if he was a child. And I don't even get a thank you. You'd be grateful because you're an educated woman, but my Bruce, all he had going for him was animal magnetism back in the day. <laughs> Hadn't worked in a while. What in the Sam Hill? Lou, you boys mind putting the trash in the can? That's what it's there for. I think it's, uh, to me, is one of my two favorites that I've done. Uh, I think right now it's my favorite that I've done. Uh, it was a horrible, horrible, horrible shoot. It was incredibly difficult. It was, every day was putrid and disgusting and horrible to get to. But, you know, at the end of the day, it was worth it. I mean, we had the, the worst first week in the history of cinema. Anything that could go wrong went wrong. And it kept going wrong every day. I had one easy day, but the movie is probably my favorite movie I've made. Um, it was, uh, this might sound weird, it, was, it seemed pure. It seemed, it seemed simple with tons of complications. And, and yet, at the end of the day, it was, it was about something universal and simple. Um, I, I, my first thought was, how is he going to do this? because I'd never worked with him before. Uh, and then I saw how he was going to do it. And, and it's so funny because to read the script and then see the movie like, like you have, it's a totally different uh, animal. But um, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's fairly universal, the, the, the piece. It's, I don't see it as a genre movie. I, really, I mean, I don't. I know it is, but I don't see it as one. I see it, I see it as a... As a a throwback movie to the to the Hollywood in the 40s and 50s, 40s, 40s. The theme is big. The look is really specific, and um, and I said to Guillermo last night, I said, you know, you really, you really understand how to speak in film language. Um, you don't. It, it's not. It's not theater. It's not. This is. You know how to tell a story on film, and it's a whole different language than in the theater. And uh, he really understands that. And you watch him shoot this, and you see how he's editing, and the shots he chooses, and the looks he wants. And um, and I, until I saw it, I, I, as I said, I knew there were eggs in, in the movie, but I didn't realize there were eggs in the movie. Yeah, it was it's pretty amazing. 以上呢就是今天介绍给大家威尼斯影展的最佳影片《水底情深》，推荐给大家喽。那我是乔林，电影娱乐报，我们下次再见喽，拜拜。